Hello everyone, how's it going? Uh, so today uh, we're going to talk about bonus. Uh, probably most of you probably don't know what it is. Oh, some people do, but even though those who do actually, maybe don't, they don't understand it uh, quite a bit. So well, let's continue. All right. Uh, so there are many stories uh, about monads. Uh, some people think they, they've seen them. Some people even understand them. And then and there are some a few a few people that want to explain what they are. OK, it's not an easy thing to, to explain a monad. And so what are they? Like, really, what is a monad then? Uh, yeah, this is a definition, right? Okay, a monad is a monoid in the category of endofunctors. Okay, if you if you want to use that one, please do. But I think it's completely useless. I mean, it's true, but yeah, it's completely useless. So yeah, it's too too mathy, right? There's lots of mathematics in it. But yeah, there's even more maths. So there are three mathematical laws that define a monad. But fortunately, we'll not talk about them here. It's not a time for it. And there's the, the zero flow and says that if you get to understand what a monad is, then you lose the ability to explain to anyone else. So and I was said by Douglas Crockford, who is like JavaScript guru. So yeah, he, he really meant it. And I think it's it, it makes sense. Once you understand it, it's like, yeah, OK, you get it. But the, just difficult to, to explain to someone else. Well, we'll try. I mean, like, I will try here. So, okay, there'll be some serious mathematics ahead. Just brace yourself. Okay, so here we go. Uh, let's have a, let's go with this. I have a simple value, let's say it's number two, okay? And I have some operations like adding two to, to the value, which means getting four, yeah? Yeah, I warn you about this math, that's the serious math I'm talking about. Yeah, what about next? I have some multiply by five operation, which also serious math, obviously. And then the other operations like to string, which is hello and then hello number, whatever I get. So uh, this is okay, this is as difficult as it gets. Then how to run them in order? So, well, you basically do like this, uh just Get some constants, apply a function to a const like to, to the input, then another function, and then eventually you get the the entire output. Hello 20. Okay. Wow, that seems complicated for now, but brace. So how about many out inputs, like thousands of them? Okay, we just talked about a single one. Okay, that's a single input. How about this one? How are you gonna do it? I mean, like that's too many of them. Okay, how about this one? Use an array, sure. So get like, okay, we create an array, put those numbers or whatever we have there into the array, and then try to run the same sequence of functions. And then, well, suddenly we get a, what's this? Uh, the, the add to function doesn't work. Suddenly gives some strange a string. Yeah, JavaScript works this way. Sorry, it's just this kind of language. And then obviously multiply by five gives you none, non number, and then gives you some well, weird result. Obviously, it's not what you want. You want to apply this sequence of functions to each element of the array, not just the array as, as a whole, right? But unfortunately, those functions, they don't understand what the array is. Uh, they understand simple numbers or simple strings, and they have no idea what the array is and how to use it. So, well, what should we do? Oh, yeah. And TypeScript will compile, obviously. And then, fortunately, the arrays provide a mapping function. So it's called the map in JavaScript. And it takes a function as its argument. And that function is that one of these simple functions that I have. And what it does, it applies that function to each element of the array and then returns another array. And then we repeat it with another map and another function and so on. So we eventually have a array of uh, strings, but that's what we need. So oh, map, what it does, it's like, it takes a function and the function itself, it doesn't have an idea that it's used in a map. It can be used outside of a map, in a, like in a map, for an array, for something else. The function doesn't care. And that's good because we don't need to modify the function. 
the function can be used with an array or without an array, uh, thanks to map, and it works. So we want now we get what we want. We have an array of strings. Great, we have a solution. Now let's call the functorial map. Okay, it's a hard name, but still. So what the functorial what's what is the functorial map? So what is a functor first? Okay, functor is something that could be mapped over, okay, like an array. You provide a map function for, for that functor thing. And then and then it maps over the functor. So so it changes the value of it or gives you another functor in the case, in this case, in it's an array with some other value. So look at the signature of this of this map function. It's pretty important to understand it. And I use a TypeScript notation here to get the types right. So the map function, obviously, it takes two, two arguments. First is the array itself. When JavaScript, it's, it's a method. So the, the first argument is this and this array, obviously, that the array that maps of, operates on. And it's an array of some type A. Whatever the type is, it doesn't matter. It's like A. OK? And then the second argument of map is the function itself that you will give it to, to it, right? But the function as the signature, it takes a, an element or, or a value of type A of the same value that the array is, is made of, and then returns a type B, whatever that type B is. It could be even the same as A. So string to string, string to number, whatever. It's like, it doesn't matter, it's any type. And then map itself returns a array of Bs, okay? So whatever the function, like the function that we provide to map, converts A to B and then map collects all those Bs and, and gives a gives an array of Bs. So it's like, okay, it's pretty simple. I mean, yeah, it's nothing really complicated. So map takes a function and the function does some transformation and map collects those transformations into a, a, a different array. Yeah, okay. That's a, that's a functor. And well, uh, even the name of the map mapping function doesn't matter. And, the signature does. This, this signature is really important. And, and the function can be called by many different names. As you can see in you know, Java, JavaScript is called map groovy, and then uh, it's called collect, and C sharp and link, it's called select. Haskell has this funny character. And React, OK, React is render, right? But React, uh, I think React can be tr treated as a functor. It's because it maps a state or props into a a DOM element, right? So if you think about it, it's it's like this really. You give some some props or state to the render render function, and then you get a a DOM structure that that you want to render afterwards. And if you give it a different maps as props or or state, you get you get a different DOM structure. So it's like maps one thing to the other. So that's what a functor is really. It's mapping something to, to something else. And obviously the name doesn't matter. Um, so map is a one-to-one -one operation. You map a single array element in case of arrays to a another single array element, like here. You multiply each element, but only you you get a you, you give an array of four and you get an array of four in the end. You cannot map it to, to zero or to more. Yeah. How about this one? How about we want to have the, the years? that Leo DiCaprio was nominated for an Oscar and then when he actually won an Oscar, which is almost nothing. Yeah, so uh, we got some years that 2005, 2007, 2014, he didn't get any Oscar for that, no, <laughs> of course not. And then only in 2016, he had the Oscar for The Revenant. And then perhaps in 2052, I mean, in 30 years from now, maybe, just maybe, you get like an Oscar for two movies in the same year. Well, I wish. I don't know. I don't care about Leo DiCaprio. But anyway, uh, he's not very good with Oscars anyway. So how about this one? How about mapping something to zero or mapping something to more than one? Like, how about map? Well, no, you can't do it with map. I mean, not even Leo can do it. So but it's a trick, right? Obviously, you can do something about it. So remember the signature? map takes an array of A and then the function converts A to B. How about B? I, I said it could be any type. The B can be any type. How about B being an array of something? Yeah, why not? I mean, like 
A is an element and then B is an array of something. Yeah, why not? It's like any, I said any type. So it could be any type. Just go ahead. How about this one? How about mapping each year to an array of something? Right. So we have a 2005 to 17, 2014 maps to an empty array because there's no such a movie that Leo would get an Oscar for. And then then 2016's map to the Revenant. Remember the beer, like down in the bar, right? Like, yeah, that, that was it. Okay. I think that the bird should get an Oscar instead of Leo, but well, that was, that's what happened. And then uh, 2052, and then you get uh, an array of two elements. And what, what you have to do next is to flood the array or flatten it. Uh, flatten is a simple operation. So it basically like flattens the array uh, one level deep in this case. And then you get, finally get an array of what you want. So this is, this is what you get. Some of the elements map to uh, zero, some of them map to one, and some of them map to many. And this is like the map followed by flatten or flat in, in case of JavaScript is so common that it's called flat map. It's like one function, just map followed by flat. Simple as that. Well, it has a dedicated name because it's just a common function to use. So really, I mean, like this is different kind of mapping, but just follow by flattening. And thanks to that, if you, if, you, if you can see it, you can get some pretty custom logic in it because you decide how many resulting elements will, will there be. So uh, flat map allows you to introduce some custom logic to mapping, not just like one to one mapping, but one to any, many mapping, one to zero mapping. So it's called monadic bind. Uh, wait, what? Yeah, the flat map is called monadic bind. The, the proper name of the function is bind, but usually we call it flat map. Uh, depends on the language, really. Like many languages called bind and the other is called the flat map. And it's actually the core function of monads. Uh, so wait, you have a monad here. Right, uh, so an array in JavaScript is a monad because it has a flat map function. Yes, and the flat map, obviously what matters here is a signature. Um, so what a flat map does, obviously it takes an array or in, well, in this case an array of A's and then a function that maps A into a array of B's, okay? So it's not A into to B, but A into array of B's. And then the return is array of B's. Uh, similar to the map function, really, if you, if you compare them. Uh, what, what, what's different here is, is, the, is the function you provide to flat map. Uh, so the function that provide to flat map needs to return an array of Bs, not just a B, whatever that B is. Uh, so, and then the, the flat map itself returns an array of Bs. And obviously the array of Bs that you return from the your own mapping function and what the flat map returns. They have the same type, but they're not necessarily the same value. If you, if you look back here, um, for example, the Oscars Leonardo DiCaprio won that year function returns uh, a array of strings for each year. And this is like for one, zero, one or two strings in this case. And then they, the entire flat map function, as you can see here, returns an array of three strings, right? So uh, it doesn't have to be the same value, but the same type. Here you go. So flat map is really what makes a monad, right? Again, the name doesn't matter. Uh, it could be flat map. It can be then called then in promises and just promises. It's called then. Yeah, I guess it makes sense to call it this, this different way. Then in Java, it's called flat map and group is collect many and link. In Q is select many, and Haskell this is bind. Okay, this is a funny symbol. Yeah. So, but you know, these are just simple arrays, right? Uh, it's like we do it like mapping and flooding operation for arrays. This is nothing to do with monads, right? It's like, okay, it's as simple as it gets. Why even bother calling them monads? Why even looking for something more than a simple mapping operation here? Well, look at another example here. Uh, you have a fetch, that's a typical JavaScript operation. Uh, so you fetch something, then you get a, like, okay, get some response, uh, parse it as JSON or get the JSON out of it. Then use that JSON object to get some element out of the structure. 
then convert it to number of element and then divide it by 100, let's say. So wait, what are you talking about here? Uh, do you see a pattern? I mean, like then, what's the signature of then? It takes a, a promise of A. Again, this is a method in JavaScript. So this promise is a, this. Not, it's not explicit. It's this of the, of the promise. And then and the function, which is one of these functions, like value to value by, 10, by 100 or number, any of these functions is really a, a function that returns a, I mean, gets a, some element and returns a promise of, uh, of some other element. Or in case of then here, because it's JavaScript, we don't care about, much about types, about types. It could even return something that's not a promise, just plain B, and then we convert it into a promise of B. So that's, that's like to make it more useful in JavaScript. So even like the, the last function, which is value by 100, doesn't return any promise, but then it converts it into the promise automatically. So you get a promise of B, okay? Whatever, like A could be like the response and B could be the JSON of the response, so conversion, right? And obviously then, then returns a promise of that B. Okay, uh, do you see a pattern here? Well, there is one. If you look at flat map and then, which is basically the same function here, you get an array of A and then the function maps A to array of B and then you get array of B. Same from then, you get a promise of A and then uh, a function that maps uh, a, a into promise of B and then you get a promise of B, right? So it can be generalized as a, as a pattern. And so bind or flat map here, it's a function that takes a monad some monad of some value a, whatever that value is, and, and the mapping function that gets you a monad of b, and then the bind function returns a monad of b. It's simple, just like this, right? So, so there's a pattern here, but I would, okay, so we got, like, we got to understand some functions, but how do you actually describe this monad thing? Okay, there's some flat map function, right? Or bind or, or then, whatever you want to call it, that takes a, a mapping function and returns a, a, another monad, whatever, but yeah. What is it for? Well, uh, my definition here is like, it's a design pattern, really. There is not, not a, like a monad. It's like monad is like a concept. It's a, it's a abstract concept. There are many monads in the world and you can call them in general a monad because it's a, it's a pattern. It's like a design pattern. If you actually look at the, I don't know, many of you actually know the gang of four design patterns that like the, I don't know, singleton pattern, whatever, like, I don't know, even know them. Uh, so monad is just one of these, but it's much more useful. Can give you an example. I was, uh, some time ago, was uh, working on a backend project and as backend in, in Java, so TypeScript actually, I had uh, more, than 100, more than 100 endpoints and I didn't use any of these gang of four design patterns, not a single one of them. They pre use this, uh, but use the monad pattern all over the place. Uh, it was full of monads and it worked very well. So it's just like in practice, it's much more useful to use monads than, than perhaps any other pattern there. Uh, if you participate in my last presentation about the railway oriented programming, it's exactly this, this thing. That's exactly what enables us. The, those railway oriented programming and the monads. So here you go some, here's some definition of that. So monad, it is very important to understand that. So monad takes a simple value of whatever kind it is and gives us a superpower, okay? So we give a superpower to the value. And at the same time, this is very important, it abstracts away that superpower. So you don't even know that's there. And because you don't even know that's there, all the functions that you use with that basic value, that simple value, continue to work with the value that's inside of the monad because of the flat map function. So yeah, you give some super, super power to something, but you don't care about superpower. It's like, it's there, but the good point about this is like, okay, it's there, but you don't have to take care about it. It's like the monad takes care about it, right? So give some example. Here's a monad superpower. Okay, uh, obviously there are many superpowers that there are in the world. So there are many well-known monads. Let's see some of them. Uh, I have a simple value, but 
suddenly there are many of these values. Like in the first example, I have a single number and I have lots of numbers. So I don't want to care about that I have lots of numbers. I want to use my basic functions on those, all of those values. So I use the list monad. It's called the list monad. And it's implemented as array, as a I enumerable in C sharp, and then as a collection, some other languages. So it goes by many different names, but in many different implementations, but it's called the list monad. So yeah, simple value, but there are many of them. And I need to care about them. Or I have a simple value, but it may not exist given that. How about that? So I have a maybe monad for that. It's called maybe. Uh, it's usually what mostly known as option, optional, or or nullable in some other languages. And then I have a simple value, but it may give an error instead of that. So I may have I may have a value, but sometimes it's an error because the computation that provides me that value failed. Okay, so it's called the either monad or, or result sometimes. And then I have a simple value, but maybe maybe not now, maybe in the future. I don't have it now, but I won't care about it. Like I want to create a computation regarding my value without considering that it's not available right now. It may be available in the future, maybe not. So I use the future monad or the promise of task or the fed. So JavaScript promises are kind of monads. Like there's something missing from that, but technically, but you don't should you shouldn't shouldn't care about it. So you can treat promises as monads. So you create a computation as you saw in the former example of these uh, fetch of this fetch function you create a computation out of the like sequence of functions each of them works with a present value but they don't they don't know that the value is there or not the monad takes care about it simple as that and then i have a simple value but i want to log every action that they do with it uh there's a writer monad for it so you can it's called writer you can log every action that you do. Like say you run computation and you want to log things, just uh, attach it to a writer monad and you, you get logging from that. Or I want to have a simple value, but I want to have a context with it. So some bunch of other values that always accompany my simple value. So there's a state monad for that, right? Many different monads. Let's see some life example now. Uh, there may be monads. I will switch to a code editor. And I will implement maybe monad. Dominic, sorry, we have one question in our chat. Yeah. Can you check uh, or, or I should read? Uh, just read it to me because I don't see it now, please. Okay. Uh, can we assume that monad is an idea of a function that proceeds some data into other data of particular type? What do you mean idea? Uh, um, um i i think we should ask arthur shevchenko arthur can you unmute? yeah sure hi so if i'm not mistaken the, this is not a particular thing but uh some principle right not a realization but some pattern etc so yeah i mean like uh moral is a design pattern right and then the idea of a monad is like, okay, if you look at the functor, functor is a simple thing. It uses map, right? Functor maps a thing into another thing. But monad, you can imagine like you get the same, okay, you get the mapping function, but you get some special logic into it, okay? You can get some particular logic into, into your mapping function that's it's not available for, for functors. So I will just give you a good example of the maybe monad that I'm going to implement it right now, and hopefully that will be much more understandable with a life example and yeah that's what that's another thing about promises yes uh i said a promise in javascript is a kind of a monad but there's some exceptions like the, i don't want to like talk in the details about the promises right now but yeah it's like technically it's not a monad because it breaks one of the laws of monads that math mathematical laws uh which I, I also won't go into details but like for like 99% of cases, you can treat it as a monad. Simple as that, right? Okay. Uh, I will switch the code now. Let's see what is here.
Right, so here we go. I'll uh, just copy some code. I have a, a phone book, right? Uh, so there's a simple phone book. Yeah, there's like names and a phone number. Sometimes the phone number is missing. And then I have some functions to work on it. Mm -hmm. I just write the function here. So first function will be I find entry by name. I'll just put this like, so what is this? Okay. Right, this uh, phone book find entry under my name. What does it say here? Token, token. I have uh, some token here. All right, good. This token is. Yeah, cool. probably curly brackets. Oh, yeah. Line yeah. Eight, yeah. yeah, good about it. Okay, so I have a simple function that like lets me find a entry in the phone book by its name. Okay, and gives you the, the entire entry. And then uh, what's the other function? Then I have another function that says get entry, like phone from the entry. Okay, so I, I give it an entry and then, sorry, just like this. Here we go. So I get a phone from the entry or Undefined if it's not there. Obviously, for Carmen, we undefined here. And then there's another function that you want to use. So this one is uh, just a prefix for like international number 99, whatever. Uh, so just simple string manipulation. Okay. How would you want to find something in the in the phone book? Well, I'd say the classic way to do it is like this. Okay. Why entry by name? I would say Alice. Um okay, let's say entry yo, and then if entry obviously if there's entry, then we can do if oh okay, else um sorry it's like missing. And if there's an entry, then um then get phone. Get a phone from the entry. Entry create and if there is a phone, okay, then, okay, just write it up, console log. And well, maybe with the, with the prefix. So we prefix it by the, okay, phone. And obviously there is no phone, missing entry. And then right here, missing phone, right? Works so this is the, this is how it works actually this is the way of like traditional way of doing things um, find entry by phone how about the I don't know uh, Steve okay missing entry no Steve obviously how about Cartman missing phone great works but looks ugly looks like okay just uh, like a pyramid of doom in the making so you can see this uh, going to the right all these things here more to the right if you have more functions more conditions going to go to the right and right man so so get a pyramid of doom eventually so pretty on uh illegible code so we don't want to do that right how about using the maybe monad then okay what's the maybe monad let's find out so just uh comment this out maybe monad is a monad that um uh, it has a value or has no value. So it's something that abstracts away the, the, the concept of being of lacking a value, like null. Okay. Actually, null it could be treated kind of as maybe one in JavaScript, especially that you have a special syntax for that. But well, it's not the same thing. But the basic concept is the same. So you either have a value or you have nothing. Okay. And you want to use your own functions, like all of these functions here, you want to use them on the on the value. So uh so they need to keep working. They don't know they don't know to they don't need to know that the name could be a monad or they just they, they expect something something simple like like a string, like a, a entry, like a simple object, not a monad. Okay. So let's define those uh this maybe monad here. Maybe monad has two values. It's just or nothing. Let's see what just is. Um, 
defined like this, right? So just will be a, a just a function that takes a value of any kind and returns an object. We need to have an object here. Um, get some basic stuff like it's just yes, true. Okay, it'll be just it's nothing. False. So if you ask this just object, is it is just yes, is nothing. No, I'm just, I'm not nothing. What else? Um then remember a map. What about map? Right. We want to map just into some other just, right? Uh takes a function. And then what it does, it uh applies the function to the value and returns a just, remember? So what a map function does, uh, it applies this the function that we give it to map to the value, and then that function, this thing here, will return a b. But b is not a monad; it's just b, whatever the simple value it is. And then I need to like map function needs to return a monad. Okay, so I need to wrap it in just okay, to return. Obviously, here is the map function. What about the flat map? Also takes a function, but that function actually returns a uh, returns something else. So uh, that function actually returns a monad, but that could be nothing. Okay, so get yeah, like this cone result. We apply the function to the value, and that that okay that thing here could be if result is result is just okay. Um, then we return the result, and if not, then return nothing. Or we still didn't have didn't define nothing. We just do it like here. Nothing. Nothing is a singleton, so that would be just simple object, not a function here. It doesn't take any value. It's nothing. Then I think okay. Let's define something for. For this nothing thing, okay. Here, it's just false. Okay, is nothing true? Right. So now we know that nothing is nothing. Obviously, how about the map function? Uh, let's say we don't map anything here. A map like nothing can be in, cannot be mapped to anything. So just uh, return nothing. Then the same thing, which is nothing. Uh, what a flat map. We need to implement the same functions or on just and nothing. Because we want to treat treat them as interchangeable. So I have the flat map being here. So the flat map, what do you think it is? Nothing. Obviously, you know, flat map nothing into nothing. So there's nothing. Cool. And as you can see here, this flat map here, it allows you to implement some special logic because whatever you, you return from F. Like the function could be either an adjust of something or a nothing. So it gives you the power of branching. So it's not like a mapping, like like map here always returns adjust. You can map adjust into another adjust only, or nothing into another nothing, which is the same thing. But here, flap map, which is which is a monad thing, which is monadic bind, it gives you uh it gives you this this the power to run a special logic. So you can you can map just into just or map or just into nothing, which means branching, which means you can get some branching logic here using the, the maybe mod. Okay. Uh, we're missing something. Yeah, we're missing some utility functions that we can use later, but let's see how it works then. Um, let's see. Salt. Okay. So find entry by name first. Let's put it this way. Put it like like this. And then we we go next. Uh, flat map. Use the flat map to compose more other functions. So what was the next one? Oh, we're still not there. Get me from we have from from entry. Yes, but we have a problem here. Um, yeah, this is not a. This doesn't give you this flat map function because it doesn't return monad, right? Remember that the flat map function requires that the function you provided to you returns a monad. Okay, so here we need to tweak this function somehow. So let's say like this, and then return 
entry, just entry. Okay, you return a monad here. You need to return a monad. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to use this function find entry by name in a, a monad context. So you turn a monad entry or nothing. Now we have a full monadic function. How about this one? Yes, as well. Uh, here we this function requires you to use a branching logic here for this maybe monad. So you either have something like the entry or you have nothing. Okay, how about this one? Yes, you either have a phone or you don't have a phone. So now uh, you can easily do this like this. So, so entry phone. If it exists, just return just entry phone. Or if it doesn't, return nothing. Here you go. How about this one? Phone. Well, there's no branching logic here. So this one would not work with flat map, but works with map because there's no branching logic here. So how about this one here? Cons result, let's write it down. Console log result. Hey, I have something. Get phone from, so what's this? Carmen. Yeah. Right. So you get this object, but how about uh, getting value from it? Right. Still missing the function. Hey, how oh, this one? Get the value or else. See, like the monad itself, like the concept of the monad doesn't say anything about getting the value back from a monad. If you put something into a monad, you usually don't get it back. Right. So how about how the promise in JavaScript? You put something in the promise, how to get it back? You can't really. I mean, like, no. Uh, what you can do is work inside of the monad, like using the then functions to, to work in it. How about an array? How do you get a value from array? Yeah, you get one by one only. How about the, the entire array? Yeah, you can get a slice of an array, even the entire array as, a, as an array, but still a monad. The array is a monad. So usually a monad does not give you the value back. I mean, it's not part of the, the, of the definition of being a monad. It's like, it could be, but usually it's not. So. Uh, here, we want to get the value back from, from just, but it could be nothing, okay? Like the monad could be nothing. So we need to have, have an else, and the else will be like, okay, this is the default value. If there's nothing, you use that value. So get or else, uh, uh, would that be, so we're missing a comma here. That will be, uh, we just return value. How about from nothing? Obviously, nothing will have nothing. So we return that out value. And I will now get or else. Okay. Now I'm getting something. So uh, Carmen doesn't have a phone number. So getting the phone phone, whatever I put here. How about Alice? I get a phone number here, right? So how about Bob? I get a phone number as well. Great. Uh, so this one allows you to get, like we created this one to get the value out of the monad, but only on the condition that I provide an alternate value in case it's nothing. Otherwise, like why use it? But uh, always have to provide some alternate value. Let's say the phone phone, let's say one, 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 whatever, okay. And uh, how about this prefix thing? Here he is. Uh, what's the prefix here? Right. So this doesn't return a monad. There's, there's no branching logic here. So it's just simple string to string. See, the maybe monad is used for things that can fail. And you don't care what the failure is, but there is a failure. So let's say this one failed because there's no entry. You don't want to know why it failed, but simple, you say it failed. So it's nothing. This one can also fail. It can succeed with just, or it can fail with nothing. You don't care why it failed. Maybe there's no phone. Maybe the phone is just too large or whatever, or but it failed. So maybe Monas doesn't care why it failed, but simply because it did. It did. So there's a branching logic. There's a possibility of failure in a function. Use this maybe Monad. Otherwise, there's no failure here. There's like simple string to string mapping. There's no failure possible. So prefix phone does not return a Monad. It could be used with map instead. How about this one? Then you can map um, prefix phone. 
no, sorry, I'm using here, I need to use here because it's still on the monad here. So, right, right, right. At this time, I have a string, not a monad. So, and now I have a prefix, as you can see. It's prefix. Great. Um, how about Alice? Yes, I have prefix. How about Carmen? Yes, I don't even have Rex here. I need to put it by hand if you want to. Right, uh, because this only applies to the monad, not to the string that I get here. Because the, uh, the result is a string eventually. Uh, what else can I add to the monad? Hmm. I can get a recover function. What about recover? Uh, yeah, like this. I want to recover something. How about being able to recover from the from nothing thing? Yeah. I get nothing. What's the what's the solution? Let's see, uh, any mapping or flat mapping of nothing gives you nothing. So I'm pretty stuck into nothing. How about like there's some logic I want to recover from nothing with a given value? No, let's do it. Recover. Um, Mm -hmm. value. No, it, there's some recovery value that I want to provide because nothing does not give me any, any value, so I want to recover with that value. Uh, okay, there's no no recover here, so return. So return just value. Okay, there's no recovery for. Oops, what's this? Oh no. Uh, okay, I don't know what it is, but let's see. <laughs> Doesn't allow me to to use more line kinds of code. Let's yeah. You know. Okay, recover. Uh, so recover for for just gives me just just doesn't need to recover for anything. How about this one then? Here you go recover. Oh, no. Yeah, I need to probably trim the code. Yeah, I will switch to a JavaScript console maybe. And just give me a second. Maybe you could use another tool uh, like stack bits or something like that. Yeah, look, uh, I will use just a simple JavaScript console. Uh, what's this? Uh, maybe this one either. Okay, this one. So, use a console, sources, snippets. Get a new snippet. Uh, should work. Are you seeing this one or not? No, probably not. So uh, just uh, copy the code. So I'm trying to copy the code now. Okay. Uh, all right. So you, you can see it here. I guess. Okay. So um, here's my nothing. Here's my recover function. How about the recover function for nothing? Okay. Here you go. So recover gives you some value and you want to recover with that value. So actually what you return is just with that value. So you, this allows you to recover from, from nothing with the, with the value that you provide. How about this one? Okay. Um, so what do we here? Let's see, it works. Yes, you have this one. And then come in. Let's see. So, okay, I'm going to recover here. 
Oh, six, 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 whatever. Okay, here you go. So Carmen, you get this one. So uh, so recover. Okay, this one didn't find anything. This this one this one returned nothing because there's no Carm. So recover allows me to to recover from the error and 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 gives me a just. So this one recover uh, gives me a just with this default value here. So let's put it this way, like this one. And so now this one's not really useful anymore because we still get a value. This is like our recovery value. Great. And then you prefix it with map. So you can see there's a nice monadic like combination here. It's a composition. If you if you remember the old code, which is like convoluted and, and the pyramid of doom, well, it's here's not the case. The code is very linear, lin linear, uh, incomposes nicely. Anything else we can add to the mod? Yes, uh, there's some some utility functions you can perhaps add there. How about um, how about some uh, uh, effects? Let's say um, I'll just copy the function I have. So let's say what are these effects? These effects are like look. This looks like looks like a mapping function. If, if just if you provide a function that executes the function, but it returns the same value. So it's, an, it's it's a collateral effect. It's, it does something but returns the same thing that 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 was in the beginning. And if nothing, obviously there's nothing to do here. Nothing. If nothing does nothing, it just returns the same value. Um, and the array in JavaScript has the same thing. It's called for each. For each uh, does something like does an effect with the array, but it doesn't affect the affect the array. Unfortunately, it doesn't even return it. That's a, that's a failure of JavaScript here. But the idea is the same. So don't touch the monad. Just do something about it, but don't touch it. And here, I get this one here. So for just or for nothing, it's it's the opposite way. If there's just, to nothing, do nothing. And then here, if there's nothing, execute the function. So let's say if just uh found i don't know and if nothing oh, so this has to be a function so uh, it has to be a function that does something so it's actually log it console log and actually takes a takes your value confound found something and then and nothing also a function that logs something in this case Sorry, no found. Here you go. Um, sorry, no found. Carmen. How about Carmen? Found, yes, Carmen, right. It logs the entire thing because that's what it gets here. Um, so these are like effect functions. They, they don't touch the, the other like monad, they just operate, like execute an effect based on what the monad is. So this is basically the, the solution. So we have a maybe monad. Works like this. Um, any questions about this monad? Uh, I have a one question. Uh, if that code is uh, in TypeScript, can you define maybe type as just or nothing? Yeah, I mean, perhaps, perhaps. Uh, I'm not sure what the correct solution would be. Uh, I tried to like play with TypeScript with the monads here. Um, I run into some problems uh, because TypeScript, like, okay, yeah. Um, so in theory you could, but I'm not sure if the, if is that if that's the optimal way. There may be some other ways, better ways to do it. So if you if you want to use TypeScript, you have to think how, what the better solution would be, right? But in theory, yes, it's like it's a union, it's a tagged union between just and nothing, really. Yeah, yeah in theory. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, look, Eva, we still have like a uh, half an hour or something. Uh, do you guys want to implement another monad? Like, I, I need a volunteer. If someone wants to implement a monad like, like this using one of these online tools or even the JavaScript console, it could be a different monad to implement. Pretty similar to this one, but slightly different. Anyone wanted to do it? I'm looking for a volunteer. Really? Yeah. Looking for a volunteer. Who wants to do it? Or should I pick someone? I can be a volunteer. You, Tomek? I can be a volunteer. Okay, go ahead. 
sure. Uh, let's do this. Um, let's implement a, a, a either mona. What's the either mona? Yeah, it's a either either mona, right? Or either mona has two values, right? One is uh, right and some value. It's like it's like just okay. What's called right? The other one is called left, and usually by like by convention is an error, right? Or any 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 other value that you can treat as an error, okay? And, but, so it's a kind of a maybe monad, but in maybe monad you don't care what the why it failed, it just failed. Here you do care about the failure, and you collect the error and store the error. So you have right and left, and left is the error, right is the correct value. So basically. You perhaps you could copy this code and and work it out with the this one, yeah. I will. I'll get you this code copied. Um, what should I copy? Do chat, right? I'll copy it to the chat. Sorry, what is this? I don't know why I cannot copy it here. Right. So you can share the screen, right? And you can start working with the implementation. Uh, just one moment. Uh, where did you copy the, this code? I didn't. Uh, I know, I'm not sure if it's, why it's not working here. Let's see. Uh, Zoom doesn't play well with actual code, so no. probably uh, you can save it in the file. I just like I try to piece by piece. Yeah, I'm copying the code piece by piece. I get this one, and then I'll give you this simple function with the phone book. Use the same phone book, I think. Yeah. So you can use the code that I copied, and then just uh, share the screen. I mean, like, why not? Uh, sure, let me just copy all this stuff and I'll share my screen right away. So. Okay, I copied it right, and I will share my screen now. Can you see it? Yeah, sure. I will use Visual Studio Code and uh, Node.js if you don't mind. Sure. All right, I hope I haven't missed anything here. Not a bit, so it looks a bit nicer, right? Okay, and uh, right. now we, we need to start implementing the either and uh, right either model. You can, you can rename the the maybe model that you have uh, above. You can just re rename them. All right, this one we will call like uh, this one we will call either right mm. but uh i would just to call it right and left in a sense sure mm -hmm. we have right and here we have left mm -hmm. so both of them are functions uh because before the, the nothing nothing was uh was an object was a single term because there's only one nothing there are no two nothings and here left will take a value so it behaves just like right, but slightly differently. So you can structure it just like right, taking the value. So it's a function that takes a value. Yeah, yeah, it's like, like right. object. Yeah, exactly. Into this parentheses for that. Mm -hmm. Right. So you can go line by line and changing things, really. Uh, 
Yeah. Uh, so first of all, uh, do we still need, like need this? Is just and it's not. Yeah, it's it's useful right? because you want to like figure it out in, using flat uh, in inside of flat map. You want to figure it out is if it's right or left, right? So I would I would just keep them as as they are. Just rename them. Is is right? Is left? Mm -hmm. They're actually useful. It's right. And here we can do the same. It's right. It's right is left. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, then probably uh, we need to, you know, redefine uh, left because here we have not an object but a function left as that kind of reacts to the error. Am I right? Um yeah basically like map you can like use in either monad you can map the right and map the left okay uh but but usually like because we keep some distinction like by convention we apply like it's uh we usually treat the right as as the correct correct like uh value so use the map and flat map functions only on the right once on the left, you you give them special names. Like instead of uh, flat map, you you use recover, which is flat map left and map left as well. Map left instead of mm, just map. Okay, and why? Because we want to just like make it really um, noticeable that you use that you want to apply a mapping function to the left, not to the right. So I would just keep map and flat map on the right, and once on the left, I would have map and flat map return the same value as it is without any modification, right? So I would just return uh, in case of here, in case of map and on the left, I would just return left of the value. I would do anything like I wouldn't do anything with map on the left. So just return just left. Return the left. Yeah, map. Yes, this is good. No, it's good. Yeah, it takes a function, still takes a function, right? Okay, yeah, obviously. And then left of value. Yeah, okay. Could be could be nothing there. Okay. And and line 15 is left of value, right? Oh, line 15, it's left of a value still. All right. Right. And, and flat map is the same thing, really. It doesn't do anything. Okay. Now we need to implement the functions that are called map left and what is map left? We just use a different name, but it's same as map on the left. But we want to have a different name just not to confuse things, right? So you can create a new function that's called map left. And it, it, it does exactly as, as map is supposed to do. Same thing. It takes a function and then it uh, turn uh, uh, left. Uh, yes, it, it skips on the left. Map always skips on the left. And the function of the value, it's like function of the value, like you execute the function with the value. Yeah, so no, no. Yeah, and then and then you and you wrap it in into left. Exactly, right. This is good. And then you, you need to implement the same the same map left function on the right, doing nothing. Because we, we need to keep the function parity, right? So this one map left it function and we uh right right of value mm -hmm. you do nothing here and then flat map how about how about flat map on the on the right uh, flat map on the right this is uh, good but the result obviously the result ask if if it's if it's right not it's just if it's right mm -hmm. it's right we put here and if it's right then we return uh right of no wait, 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 wait no oh here uh actually you don't do anything here because the function f it's assumed to return left or right so you just return the f of value right nothing else you return the result f of value and if you, you you don't need line 10 line 10 is not necessary here because the function that you provide to flat map 
must return either right or left already, right? So it's just like this. Mm -hmm. How about, about flat map in on the left? How about line 24? Uh, all right uh so again we need to return no no no. it's good it's good yeah just just keep it as it is yeah it does nothing uh, we want to have a flat map left okay but keep, just don't write anything yet no no wait 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 so by convention use flat map only on the right whereas flat map left could have a function that's called recover okay recover is like flat map left because it needs to recover from the error and either stay on the error side or or keep to the or keep to the keep to the right, right? So it's like flat map, flat map left, but we call it recover because it's a better name for that. So uh, that's the recover function for you. And it takes a function here. So line 25, 25, but it it will take a function because now the left has an actual value. It's not nothing, it is some value you need to process. So you keep it, you give it a function. And then you use the same logic as a uh, as flat map. And the same logic. So I like just uh, a flat map. That's it. Like flat, flat map like nine. No, just no, no. It could return right because it's a flat map. It's just a different name. Uh, no, look, look, line line nine. The same thing. It's a flat map. So all right, we we'll just return value. Of function. Yeah, exactly. And line twenty four is not necessary. I mean, like no, line twenty four. Flat map, just uh, it should return the same thing. So no, no, you you should keep the function because you you, you want to have the function, right? But so you, I, you yes, make... I want to have keep the function, but it should, yes, it should return the same thing as recover. No, 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 no. Uh, the idea is not to use the same name of function. So it should return just the the left value, nothing else. So left, just like map of the left, just like like twenty. Uh, or... You mean like, uh, z like uh, this like, guy, like, right? Yeah, exactly. All right. Because flat map is like inert; it doesn't do anything. Flat map on the left and map on the left don't do anything. That's why we have special function, special function with special names like map left and recover. They're actually the the correct versions. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Okay, uh, and then. This if just if nothing you can you can delete them or or you can rename them. Well, I I'm sure if you want to use them, you can uh, if right, if right or. Right. If left. Mm -hmm. And this one. So if right, okay. If you if you look at this one, okay. Right. Thank you. If all right so what line 13 does yeah executes the function with value and returns it must return the same thing so mm -hmm. so yes that's it this is exactly that's what it does okay and if left yeah and if left uh just execute the, the value here and also, exactly since we have function yeah. no, no no but this is if right so it doesn't it, no, no. If right should not work on the left, right? So here, for if right, you don't you don't do anything. You just return the left. And if left here, and you to return the left value, you're missing the here. Exactly. I think it's complete now. And you can try to run it then. But remember to change the code here. Okay, you have left, and then look line forty nine. You have left, but you, but instead it used to be nothing. And now it's yeah, left. And now it's a function. You care about the, you can like like a string. I mean like, it's an error. So, so you can like okay, uh, enter is missing or something. I don't know whatever error you want to put there. So it could be a string. Okay, could be. And then line fifty six as well. You need to put an error like okay, no phone. I don't know. Okay. Great. And then you just run the sequence. And now we have like a list of phone books, right? Uh, no, first uh, use the function that gives like find entry by name. 
don't don't give it fun folks. Like finance with my name, put a name here, Alice, Bob, or Carmen. Alice. And then and then you flat map or yeah, you, you can use uh recover here because okay, flat map. Look, okay, get entry, get form from entry here. Get form from entry. Get form from entry. And then you can map it into like the prefix. Um, graphics phone. And then you get the value eventually. Um, get the get Yeah, it's, it's this one. Yeah. And provide the file value. Okay. I try to run it then. Um, do I need to save the things in the value? Probably can't. I don't know. So right. It's text. I do. Okay, right, uh, this so is a phone number. Yeah. It does something. So let's how about Vlad how about Vladimir? I don't know, whatever. Yeah, could be. Yeah. And we have the whole ball here. Mm -hmm. But you can also recover from it before before it hits hits the flat map. You can recover it. Like there is no entry, you can recover, like provide the default entry if you want to. So use a use a re recover. Recover is the same as a flat map on the left. But flat map works on the right and the recover works on the left. They are exactly the same function. But you need to provide the entry itself. Like, you know, like the value you need to provide is for the get from get form from entry. Okay, Vlad needs to be a value compatible with the input for get form for entry. That's how the sequence works. So you need to provide the entire object. Like, uh -huh. like it's, it was a phone entry, right? Like an object like this, like a line of this. I'm not sure I'm following. Yeah, look, look because uh, you recover with, with something, but that's something that will be fed into the next flat map function, which will be the get form from entry. Yes, so, so that it, it has to be a phone uh, number. No, 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 but that the get form from entry expects an entry, not just a phone number. It expects an entire entry. If you if you move up, if you move up, get one from entry. Just look at the, one of the entries, just line 40. Uh, 42, let's say 41, 42. All right, this so, uh, yeah, we need to like return. Yeah, the exactly. That could be like you can recover with this one because the next function requires something like this. Okay. Yeah, that in makes sense. Entire entry. Yeah. So you, you recover, like I'll say, with, with Vladimir, let's say. So there is no, there is no, okay, Vlad. Okay. And then. And. Is there something wrong at this not the function? Oh, okay, it needs to be a function. It needs to be a function. So a function that returns this object, right? And then parentheses. parentheses. Mm -hmm. And there is another. Can me, show me the recover function again. How is the final uh, um, recover? If it, on the left, we just do. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, wait, because wait, because recover. Yeah, we, we missed something. No, this is this is good because recover. It needs a left or right to be the, because you you can you can still get a. It's like a flat map, so you can you can get a right or left, right? So if you go down, if you go down to your code, to the sequence. Then what you what the recovery returns must be left or right. Yeah. That's what I'm missing here. So I put like right. Exactly. Yeah. Right. You recover with something or or with left and right. Yeah. Here it goes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but uh I'm not sure it works. Uh, just one moment. Um, whether I will just type another characters here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. It does yeah. work. And if you if you change the name to Alice again, like the in the in the first line, then obviously recover will not work. Will not even run. Right. So, so this one like you can sequence your actions without taking care of like, okay, there's an error, right? So so 
this monad abstracts the, the error, but you, you don't need to care, take care of it. Like it takes care of it automatically. That's the whole idea of, of this either monad. And uh, if you participate in the, my, my previous talk about the railway oriented programming, that's exactly the monad I used, but I use the implementation of it is a promise in JavaScript because it gives you some benefits of being asynchronous as well. But it's the same idea, exactly the same idea. This is railway oriented programming. So this code works. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. You did well, very well. Thank you for the instructions. And just the one uh, question uh, at mm -hmm. the end. So like, since we have, uh, you know, like recover and uh, it kind of expects that we pass, uh, that we pass here a monad, like right monad. Mm -hmm. Uh, would it be logical uh, to encapsulate this uh, right wrapping into the recovery function itself? Yes, but you can do it. But what if the recovery fails? What if the recovery is not possible? Then perhaps I mean, it makes sense to, to, to have a possibility to return left, right? Yeah. All right. Because the recovery is not always successful, right? You can recover, but what, what, what if you can't? Sorry. What if Hmm? We need to return here another model in case uh, recovery uh, fails. You turn left. You turn left, and you still get left. You're still on left, but you can you can just have a different value of left hmm? if you want to. Uh, so yeah, so uh, basically the recovery can fail. That's why we need to have a, the possibility to, to to return left here. Mm -hmm. Sure, that makes sense. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So. Uh, any questions? Any anything you want to talk about? Um, just one question. Uh, do we have some kind of library, for instance, in JS world? So that we know. Yeah. There are a couple of libraries. Uh, I think one of the famous ones called Fantasyland. Um, but there's some others, oh, some some for TypeScript as well. Um, if you Google them. I don't know which one is the best. So basically, because what I use mostly are the promises. So the promises are included in JavaScript. And this is basically what I use. However, uh, yeah, there are, there are many libraries of JavaScript. Fantastic, I think, is the, the, mo the most recommended one. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Um, No questions from my side. I just want to say that it was perfect. Dominique, thank you so much for this presentation. Sure. I hopefully, hopefully you understand Monats before Leo gets another Oscar, which could be many years to come, but hopefully before that. So yeah. Thank you very much for for his participation on this presentation and take care. See you. Thank you so much, Dominique. And dear participants, please don't forget to fill in our feedback form because your feedback is important for us. Thank you for attending this event. Have a good evening and Dominique, have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.